Hey everyone, in today's prediction, which is based on fossils, evolution invented their own mutation rate and predicted that humans split from chimpanzees around 7 million years ago. They calibrated their own mutation rate clock to match the fossil record. Then they could force fit the data to match this prediction. As for creationists, it was Nathaniel Jensen who predicted that if we looked in the mitochondria, that we would find nowhere near the amount of mutations expected if 7 million years of time had passed. That was predicted in 2015 and published in 2017 in his book, Replacing Darwin. So the predictions were laid out and in print. Now it was time to test which model made the best prediction. Over time, mutations build up in the mitochondria. If deep time evolution is true, then we would expect to find the mitochondria completely saturated in mutations. If young earth creation is true, then we would only find a few mutations. This is based on how fast the mutation rate in this region is. And we would expect to find 21,457 mutations would have built up in this region over that amount of time. This means we should find complete mutation saturation of 12,000 mutations in the mitochondria. We are not even remotely close to equilibrium. I decided to run these same numbers on a highly conserved region of the mitochondria called the CO1 gene. And I got the exact same results. Nowhere near the amount of mutations have occurred and nowhere near mutation saturation. We find a fast mutation rate and few mutations. This can only mean one thing. Young Earth creation is true, and the genetic evidence supports this. The evolutionary community even admits that this discovery confounds the prediction made that we should see much more genetic diversity, yet we don't. How have evolutionists tried to deal with and explain this destructive evidence that's against them? Well, it has been ignored overall, with the exception of an atheist blogger who goes by Evograd, and one of the biggest critics of Dr. Nathaniel Jensen's work. After reading his critique, he literally had nothing to save the science. He actually admits that there is far too many differences compared to what we observe. This is why he wrote an entire essay dedicated to both griping about Dr. Nathaniel Jensen's chart showing 21,457 mutations as where we can only see 12,000 mutations and how often these mutations occur regarding a particular position. This is how desperate they are. Not only did he miss the entire point of why Jensen put those numbers on the chart to begin with, because it is not that we should see that many mutations. It is the fact that Jensen says that many mutations total should have occurred over that amount of time. And that it is clear that we would find mutation saturation, not that we would find 21,457 mutations when looking at the mitochondria. This is what you get when you have critics who are emotionally responding to something because they are dead set against it. Overall, he ignores the actual problems and hand waves the topic away altogether because of the fact that it is yet again another failed prediction and falsification of evolution. His goal clearly was trying to make everyone reading focus on both Jensen as a person and not the argument itself. This is why he did not answer it because it cannot be answered in the evolutionary community. As they begrudgingly admit, evolution is unfalsifiable nonsense that is so plastic it can use any evidence for it and nothing discovered will ever be good enough to falsify it because it's complete pseudoscience. This is why schools teach so little evolutionary science because it is known as a soft science, all based on hypothetical assumptions about the past using historical science rather than observational. And they even admit that over the last 100 years, biology itself has progressed without any help from evolution theory. None of the fields from molecular biology, biochemistry, physiology, don't even take evolution into account at all. Evolution theory really is the origin of nonsense. It holds back actual progress in many fields. And this is why the NIH, or the National Institute of Health, the largest health organization on Earth, uses the biblical young earth creation model 
called Mendel's Accountant, created by Young Earth creationist Dr. John Sanford, Robert Carter, and John Baumgartner. If evolution was true, why would they not use some evolutionary program based on the rate of mutation effects and proliferation spreading through a population over deep evolutionary time? Instead, they used the rate of fast mutation spread through the population, which was predicted by us young earth creationists. They clearly do not care about the creation versus evolution debate. They just care about what works, and what works is the biblical creation model. This rate of fast mutation accumulation is a paradox for evolution, and they have been trying to solve it for decades. There is even a list of all the different names and books written on it. Evolution is not science. It never has been and never will be. It doesn't even meet the criteria, and this is why it has failed at all the major predictions down the line, and it's why it will always fall to young earth creation.